The new raid boss in Pokemon Go isn't Palkia, isn't Dialga, it's Cresselia. But you guys already knew that. So yes, it's kind of interesting. This is the first time Pokemon Go has broken a trio. So, kind of wondering why they picked Cresselia. But, Cresselia does kind of look like a turkey. So if you think about it, it kind of makes sense why they picked Cresselia, you know. At any rate, you probably clicked on this video because you want to know how good Cresselia is or just how bad it is, and you want to know how to beat it down. So we're going to start out with the basics here, and then I'll get into the swag graphs, and then you will know. So starting out with the basics, Cresselia is a psychic type Pokemon. It's a legendary Pokemon. It's the Pokemon of dreams. It's actually based off a duck, not a turkey. And um, yeah, it's got a counterpart named Darkrai. Darkrai is like the nightmare Pokemon, where Cresselia is the dream Pokemon. Darkrai is also a mythic Pokemon, so maybe we'll get some mythical Darkrai quests coming up. Darkrai is actually pretty hype. If you want some more details on Darkrai, I do talk about it in my Gen 4 analysis video. Really powerful dark type Pokemon if you want to check that out. Cresselia here, not very inspiring. Yeah, max CP of 2857, which doesn't really mean a lot. What does mean a lot is the attack stat, 152. So that's uh, that's really bad. Like uh, the baby Pokemon, Smutchum, you know, Jinx's pre-evolved form, that thing has a higher attack stat than Cresselia, so kind of lame. Cresselia in the main series games makes up for its low attack stat with its high bulk and then, you know, use of status effect moves and support moves, but Pokemon Go doesn't have that. So Cresselia just has its bulk, but legendary Pokemon can't be placed in gyms. So Cresselia doesn't really do a whole lot with that. If you're curious about its TDO, total damage output ranking, Lugia and Mewtwo are better than Cresselia, and Cresselia's got way worse DPS than them, so basically a unusable Pokemon for most people. Uh, power it up if you really like Cresselia and like disappointing people in raid parties with you. As far as its movesets go, it does have Confusion, which can make the raid battle a little bit more spicy, and it also has Psycho Cut, which basically makes the raid battle super easy mode. Future Sight is a little bit spooky for uh, Gengar to go up against, and Aurora Beam and Moonblast just basically say no to Dragon types that want to feel good being generalists. We're going to have to use some different generalists for this raid. Uh, fortunately, it's psychic type, so we got a lot of Pokemon to use against it. So this is a graph of the Cresselia raid counters using all of Cresselia's movesets averaged together. The counters are level 40 unless stated otherwise. Everyone's treated to be best friends and no dodgings involved. The x-axis, if you're not familiar with swag tips, is total damage output, which is a more useful metric for tankiness. And then the y-axis is damage per second, which is like the, uh, the important number. For most players. All the status from Go Battle Sim on Game Press. Uh, check out Go Battle Sim if you want to get some precise data. Although I will say that Poke Battler is a lot more user friendly for people just looking for general results. So overall, usually I give some good credence, you know, a lot of favoritism towards the high TDO Pokemon, but I do have to say that Gengar is kind of blowing Cresselia out of the water here using either Shadow Claw or Lick. Now these are both exclusive moves. And reflecting on it, I probably should have done a Hex simulation. I didn't. Uh, Hex would be better than Banet. I'm probably going to get burned for that one if I don't validate it. Alright, Hex is 729 in time to win. And this guy is 805 in time to win. So, okay, Hex is better than Banet. Yeah, as I was saying, Gengar overall, I feel, is the best counter to this raid boss. You'll see that its total damage output is roughly 3.4, 3.5. And with that, if you use six Gengars maxed out or, you know, at least level 33.5 or something, then if that whole party of yours gets wiped out, then depending on the moveset of Cresselia, basically if you're up against not Future Sight, right, uh, then you probably did 20% TDO to the raid boss in a faster period of time than other Pokemon would, which could potentiate your ability to get that extra damage bonus ball in. So that's pretty cool there. I'll definitely be front-loading my teams with Gengars. And then after Gengar, maybe just throw in a Mewtwo, a Tyranitar, or a Metagross at the end of the channel, like, you know, anchor it in, seal the deal. Because, you know, relobbying, kind of lame. Uh, but if you really do want to gun for that bonus ball and you've got a whole bunch of maxed out Shadow Claw and Lick Gengars, then by all means, 
load that whole party up with nothing but them, re-lobby, and uh, dash for that extra bonus ball if you can get it. Now for those that aren't too familiar with my graphs, the points that are highlighted are usually breakpoints. If they have an asterisk next to them, I probably selected them just as a general point of reference, like Mewtwo here with Psycho Cut, for example. Uh, Psycho Cut and Shadow Ball, just to validate what moveset it has here for you guys. It uh, doesn't really have a break point because it's such a light attack. Depending on what you level it up, the Psycho Cut doesn't change. So then people want to know, well, what about my level 30 Mewtwo? What about my level 20 Mewtwo? So I just put those points there to validate it. Uh, the Lick Gengar point here is actually a bulk point. Both Gengars experience this bulk point, but Shadow Claw Gengar also has a break point there as well. So, right, it's a little bit confusing there. Um, but yeah, if you're curious about bulk points and break points, you're not too familiar with them, link in the description to guides and calculators on bulk points and break points so you can get learned up on them. Now that that's out of the way, yeah, Tyranitar, ultra tanky option. If you're lacking Gengars or you just want to tap at your screen, do respectable damage and not really think, well, Tyranitar is there for you. And if you want to do that, but you don't have a whole bunch of Tyranitars, well, Meteor Mash Metagross is actually pretty swaggy. Unlike Tyranitar, Meteor Mash Metagross resists everything Cresselia has. Tyranitar is technically weak to Moonblast. Not that Tyranitar really minds, right? Thinking about Cresselia's movesets and how they influence the Pokemon's positioning on these uh, on this graph here, um, you got Honchkrow and Weavile, and usually they're pretty similar in performance. But Honchkrow is kind of getting held back because of the Aurora Beam moveset. This is all movesets averaged, so its tankiness, its total damage output, is lowered because you know the ice attacks are thrown into the mix. Similarly, Weavile's performance is boosted here because ice resists ice. So. Yeah, that's why these two are a little bit divided from each other. If you want to be optimal and show off your shiny Honchkrow, uh, then I suggest throwing it out against matchups where you aren't against the Aurora Beam. And those that are into uh, obscure shinies, uh, Weavile actually has a really interesting shiny. I suggest looking it up sometime. Now, I do have a whole bunch of other options featured on this graph at level 40, and I decided to feature a lot of the very low-level options just to let you know that you know, level 26 Honchkrow, for example, is as good slash better than a lot of these level 40 options. You know, a level 30 Mewtwo, a Shadow Ball, or a level 20 Mewtwo, a Shadow Ball, might be better than, you know, level 30 or more fledging level uh, Pokemon that, you know, are also featured here at level 40. You know, Tyranitar is also a really good one for that because it could be ultra tanky, similar with Metagross. So if you don't have level 40 options or you know really high level options for these alternative Pokemon but you do have you know low level or poor IV but high level like Metagrosses and Tyranitars and Mewtwo's and uh, Gengars you might want to favor those guys above I don't know level 30 shift tree or something like that right you know a lot of really low level options of the best counters still stand out in a really big way now one Pokemon that does stand out in a really big way for sucking is Agron yeah, Agron doesn't fit this graph because its DPS is way too low. It has 9.4 DPS. And you might think it's, well, it's tanky, Ryan Swag. You know, it's got low DPS, but it's tanky. Yeah, its TDO is only 3.6, which, you know, you may as well use a level 20 Tyranitar or something, right? So um, if you have, you know, five minutes of your time, maybe just set up a battle party right now for Cresselia so you don't get stuck with Agron each time because Agrons are just disappointing. Uh, similarly, Lugia is also disappointing. I heard that Pokemon's been popping up in some people's raid parties. So yeah, if you got a perfect Lugia and it's level 40, I don't care how powerful you think its Hydro Pump is. Uh, use a level 20 Shadow Ball Mewtwo or something. Or like any of the Lick Gengars that you caught during Gengar Day, <laughs> or Metagrosses with Meteor Mash. Those guys are going to be way better. Oh yeah, and cool news. Yeah, we're getting that special every single Community Day Pokemon event coming up in December. Um, Metagross, if you missed out on the Meteor Mash, greatest attacker in the whole game, you know, by DPS times TDO standards. And uh, yeah, so we got another shot at it. And other legends like SmackDown Tyranitar, so pretty hype. You guys might be curious about duos and trios, and duos, you need at least 21 DPS, and you can see the graph ends here at 20, and for a trio, you need 14 DPS, 
which, you know, seems like a lot of Pokemon can achieve that pretty well. My personal recommendation is if you aren't looking up the numbers yourself on Go Battle Sim or Poke Battler, to maybe go one DPS higher than that recommendation and go for like, you know, 15 DPS or something, because in practice, things might not play out the way you think. And this is just a general graph giving you, you know, the average results of the Cresselia encounter. So specific move sets, specific circumstances of your own Pokemon, depending on their IVs and levels, uh, could alter this slightly. Relobbying and how fast you relobby could negatively impact your ability to do a trio, for example. So I'd say play it safe, go with 15. If you use a bunch of Gengars and like a Tyranitar, you'll probably be able to get the trio in. As far as the duo, I hear it can be achieved in foggy weather with all Gengars, but as far as I'm concerned, foggy weather doesn't exist. If you are into that, then uh, good luck finding the foggy weather. So that's my content on Cresselia. Main points are Cresselia sucks as an attacker. It would be pretty cool as a defender, but it's not. As a raid boss, it's pretty easy to beat down. Main Pokemon to use in this fight is Gengar. Hex is fine. Sucker Punch is also fine. But if you got Lick and Shadow Claw, those attacks are going to be the better attacks on Gengar. And you can basically use Gengar and Womp down any of these raids with impunity. Unless you're up against Future Sight, then it might be a little bit... Might actually punch your Gengar in the gut a little hard there. So don't forget to bring in your Tyranitars as well to resist those hits. Uh, Metagross, Mewtwo, Weavile, and Honchkrow are all also very respectable options if you have them. And if you don't have them, then, you know, my graph shows other options. And as always, it don't don't use Aggron. Like, I mean, I can't tell you what you can and can't do. You're your own person. Make your own decisions. Um, but the facts are presented as they are. Aggron's bad. If you got any questions on this content, comment below, let me know, and if you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, well then make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips.